Check in. Hey guys, welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Robbie Addiction, Dr. Along with Jennifer Lovely. This is Recovery Channel Podcast. And we're coming to you late today. We're coming to you at 410 in San Antonio, live in Texas. And Jennifer Lovely, oh, she's in a better place than me. Tell yeah. her. Sedona, Arizona. Oh, man. It's, what's the weather like there? Because it's overcast and raining here. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, right? The backdrop of red rocks and blue beautiful. skies and sunshine. It's beautiful. Yeah, tempers dropped since she was here a few weeks ago. It's gone down to the 50s now. Yeah. So, like, you know, we're thinking of uh, we're thinking of moving to Florida tomorrow if it continues. Perfect. So, guys, before we get started, I want to tell you a couple of things. First of all, check this out at the bottom of your screen. It's a writing workshop, and it's free. Free. We all like free stuff. January the 3rd with Jennifer Lovely. It's absolutely amazing. You're going to learn a lot about yourself. You're going to take some time. Uh, with a group and, and listen and learn. It's going to be a real nice, relaxing afternoon and you're going to feel amazing. And did I tell you it was free? It's free. Unbelievable, Jen. That's Absolutely what, unbelievable. That's what we're all about. We're here to give things away for our people. That's what we do. It is. Any any other news before from our 12 o'clock podcast? Anything else to add? No, um, I think that's it right now. I think we're really, I really would love to uh, see all you people on this um, Imagine You writing workshop. So join, go to recovermecoaching.com and it is right there. Sign up and it's free. So Recover Me Coaching, guys, don't forget recovermecoaching.com. Uh, Let me put it back on there for you. Give me one second. Uh, there you go, guys. Recovermecoaching.com. It's got all the, uh, all the different uh, modules on. You can also, breaking news, but can't say too much, also become a recovery coach if you want, or a life coach uh, endorsed by us, myself, Dr. Rob Kelly, and Jennifer Lovely. We have a program coming out in March. If you need one details, because I know a few of you will, contact us either separately or together, and uh, we'll put you down. Sounds yeah. good. I'm excited about that, Jenny. You? Me too. I'm so excited about that. I know. Listen, guys. Oh, I'm gonna set. Let me change my stuff. Uh, I know you're asking. You sat at home. Who's on the show? Well, Andrew Kirker is on the show. Now, the name should ring a bell if you're an athlete. And I know a lot of the guys watching and listening are. Yeah, it might ring a bell. If it doesn't, stick around. This is going to be interesting. We're not talking about addiction here, but we're talking about how far you can push yourself if you really want. What you can actually achieve. If you really want to. So we're, we're really big here on the mindset, on the neural pathway set, on what we can actually push the brain and the body to do. And it's, and it's unbelievable. So when you talk about just me alone, we talk about homelessness to where I am today. It's just unbelievable. Jen going through all the stuff she's going. And as a teenager, a story is horrific, just like everyone else's. But it's, it's I think it's worse because then she had to become a mom. And then all of a sudden, bang, two sons started covering, causing problems of their own through addiction so you know the struggle and you know the mindset and you know how powerful it can be so that's what we're going to be talking about when we come back with andrew give us two seconds back we'll be back with andrew kirker on the show Welcome back to the show, guys. This is the Recovery Channel podcast. It's Dr. Rob Kelly, the addiction doctor, along with Jennifer Lovely. Andrew Kirk is on the show. Good afternoon, Andrew. How are you doing? Afternoon. I'm doing very well. I uh, had some ski training this morning. And uh, yeah, I've had a pretty nice afternoon. I'm here in Colorado. It's sunny. It's a wonderful day. Really can't complain. Happy to talk to you guys, tell everyone about my story. And, you know, hopefully they can gather a little bit of perspective from it to help change their mindset or to help them forward in life. That's really what I'm here for. Yeah, thank you for that. So talk to us about your life. Tell us where it got where you got started and all of your, what you had to go through to get to where you are today. Um, so you just want me to start off and just- Start. Let's go. I started being born from a lady named Amy Kirka. No, okay. So, no, not Amy. Yeah, yeah, Amy, no. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think my real journey, to start off serious, my real journey um, began when I was probably about eight years old. 
Um, I was young. And um, I was, uh, I just started wrestling. I was an athlete. And um, being a, a, a wrestler at this time, I had walked out and uh, just won my very first state championship. And um, I remember um, it, was a, it was a moment that really sprung deep for me. And I'll tell you why in a moment. But as I walked off of this wrestling mat, um, I had just won my th first state title. You know, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I kind of did a thing. I'm a big deal or whatever. And my wrestling coach looks at me, puts both hands on my shoulders. He looks at me and he goes, remember right now that there's always going to be someone better. Mm -hmm. And that was in itself the moment where I wanted to become an Olympian. I wanted to be the best in the world. You know, it kept me up at night. It was everything that I thought about every single moment. Um, from the time I was eight until about the time that I was 13 years old. And I had won a national title. I had become undefeated in wrestling. I won five state titles. Um, you know, um, it was that one moment, the one moment of inspiration where a dream was able to grow in a young man. And that's really what made me want to be the best in the world. Because when you're an Olympian and when you get that gold medal at the games, there's no one better. No, I could imagine. So, so let's go back to the to uh, um, Anchorage where you were born. I know you had an ATV accident at the age of thirteen. Talk us through that of how it happened, what happened at the time, and then immediately after, did that completely change your life? So um, it did, and that's why kind of like the background of you know the young man from eight years old to thirteen really kind of helps to build a picture because here I am, I'm a young athletic guy, you know, um, I had trained to become the best in the nation at 13 years old and, um, a four wheeler flips and lands on my skull and crushes my spine and paralyzes my legs. Damn. And, you know, as a, as a 13 year old, something like that is, it's, it's hard. You know, it's something that's that's so intense and so drastic. It's hard to imagine. It's hard to fathom, um, you know, especially because your entire life is built around the persona that you that you give yourself as you're growing, as you're learning, as you're progressing. And that persona when I was 13 years old was nothing but, you know, an, an athlete, you know, a, a, a friend, a son. You know, I was still 13. I was still building this persona of who I am, of who I want to be, of what I want to become. And I was dedicated, even at such a young age, to pursuing this dream that I had. And then to have a four-wheeler flip land on my head and have everything change just like that, have my world turned around, have everything crushed. You know, it was just one small, tiny choice in my life that changed everything. And then... You know, I went to the hospital. I was med vacked out. You know, it was a it was a fishing trip in Alaska, which nothing in Alaska is very localized, you know. So I had to get picked up by a helicopter and I had to be taken to the hospital. And I spent a few months in the hospital where I had surgery, where I had to go through, um, well, um, physical therapy up in the top you know i guess it was my own form of recovery i had to i had to learn how to live without the use of my legs i had to learn how to be a new person i had to build my own persona and you know like you like you said and like you asked those those moments were very hard because i'm a young man i'm 13 years old you know i i think i've got stuff starting to get figured out you know i'm doing great i had just started you know Kick, kicking butt <laughs> and um, I arrive in this hospital bed and I wake up in the morning and I'm like you know what's next what's the what's the next step for me you know what are my friends gonna think what am I gonna do am I gonna go to wrestling practice you know am I ever gonna get a girlfriend like what, what's what's happening in my life what am I gonna do now you know there were so many questions and so many fears from those questions, you know, and a lot of people they ask, they, I find a lot of people, a lot of people ask the why me, you know, and a lot of people ask me that question as well. They ask, you know, why you? Did you ever ask yourself why me? And 
Yeah, I did a lot at the beginning. Um, so when, when did you stop asking why me? When I found purpose in what I was doing. Mm. You know, when I started building my life around the person that I wanted to be and not the persona of who I thought I was because of my injury. Mm. Ever thought to yourself that that's it, I can't do anything, I'm done? Do you ever sit in the bed wallowing? Do you ever sit depressed somewhere going, that's my life over? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Man, I can't. I couldn't tell you. Like, even as a 13-year-old boy laying there, you know, laying in the hospital bed, staring at my legs that weren't working, you know, I didn't know what to do. Um, you know, I was 130 pounds when I broke my back and when I left the hospital. I was 87 pounds. As mm -hmm. a 13-year-old young man, I had turned into nothing but, you know, skin and bones, picking myself up and moving into a wheelchair had become like virtually impossible. And um, I had to start rebuilding who I was. And those wallowing moments were super hard. My, man, all of my friends at the time, you know how turning to turning to friends, turning to family, turning to all that is, it helps, you know, because people are able to, to be emotional support. They're able to help you move through that. My mom was a single mother with two boys. She, you know, she couldn't show up to the hospital. And so, because she still had my brother she had to take care of, you know? And then my friends, all my friends, they were all wrestlers, you know? They had their own things going on, and I was 13 years old. It's not like they could drive to come see me or anything like that, you know? It was, uh, and I, 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 had, I had a few friends that came and visited, and I can tell you right then that that made, that made everything change for me like that was a that was a world of difference but you know there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of support so i had to find the next level of, of who i was i had to find a new me right <laughs> right know? yeah i get that and and i'm going to speak a little frank here and a little forward but one of the one of our first places our first steps in healing sometimes starts with a big fuck you and because we have to Right. And so what I what I'm imagining is that at 13, you had to really internally find that so that you could create something different, a different life for Andrew, because everything had was taken away. So can you talk to me about that process where you just was like, OK, this is it. So that process for me actually took about two years. Mm. It wasn't just like a, you know. Okay. I'm going to get out of bed. I'm going to go do this type thing. That process, it, it, it took time for me because the I didn't want to accept what had happened to me for the longest time. And, you know, looking back now, I'm glad I didn't. But I didn't want to accept it. I wanted to walk again. I wanted to work. I wanted to be the wrestler, and I wanted to be the person who I dreamed I was going to be. I didn't want to accept the change yet. I didn't want to accept that, you know, that person is who I had become. You know, I didn't want to accept the fears of, of what I had done. You know, I didn't want to accept those things. So I started focusing on working my body, you know, physically becoming fit. And I started working on trying to walk again. I got leg braces and I started trying to walk again. And I walk now with crutches and leg braces better than probably one of the best in the world, right? To be honest. And it I was the best in the world. Yeah. Love that. I love I, that. I don't know anyone that walks no. with crutches and leg braces better than me yet. Let's I just put it to you that way. And um, I've mentored a few people walking for, with crutches and leg braces, but to, to stay on subject, it took two years. Those, those two years worth of me really progressing and really wanting to, to be who I was again, working to be who I was. And it wasn't until I had a physical therapist who had taken me, um, actually, you know what? It was, it was a series of two things. It wasn't just my physical therapist. So my physical therapist had taken me skiing and um, I was like, oh yeah, you know what? This is cool. This is, this is really neat and nice and everything. She's like, you know, you can pursue that dream that you had because of course it was all I was ever talking about because I went to 
physical therapy every single day and I worked out every single day and I wanted to be the person who I was. And I was always talking about, you know, the person who I was. And um, it, it wasn't about who I was. And she helped to show me that a little bit. She gave me the opportunity to um, ski and she took me there, she paid for it. And she said, you know, you have a chance to be the best in the world at this right now. And, you know, that, that really, it, it gave, it, it opened up the world to me. And I started to realize, you know, I can do just about anything. I just have to do it differently. Yeah. And that mindset came to me after I had gone to um, Florida and I was, I was chosen as the spokesman for the Children's Miracle Network for Alaska. Mm -hmm. I had gone to Florida. And when I went to Florida, um, I had met a young man who was seven years old. His name was Austin DeGroot. And I had spent a month or two months traveling the United States, going to hospitals and talking to young children. A lot of young children with uncertain futures, you know, a lot of kids that were born with brittle bone disease, a lot of kids that were, you know, diagnosed with cancer at three or four years old, stuff like that, you know, young, young children with uncertain futures. And when I met this young man, Austin, I was in Florida and um, we were having an event um, at Disney World. Um, and I had said that I couldn't, I couldn't show up. I couldn't arrive at Disney world because my legs from wearing the leg braces so much had started to wear down and I had sores surrounding my thighs. And, um, I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to stay back today. And I'm going to push around in my wheelchair and I'm going to, I'm going to take it one day to relax. And I took this one day to relax and I was outside catching geckos and catching lizards and doing things that you can't really do in Alaska, you know, <laughs> being, being a boy, <laughs> I was being a boy and um, I was catching these geckos and lizards and I was having a lot of fun. And that's when Austin came out and I really didn't have a chance to talk with Austin too much, not until this moment. Um, and Austin came out and Austin couldn't leave his room and couldn't go out because his white blood cell count was too low. And um, this, this young man came out and he said, hey, can I catch geckos and lizards with you? You know, can, I, can, we, can we do this together? I was like, yeah, like, sure, but are you supposed to be out here? Are you sure you want to be out here? And he was like, of, of course I'm sure, you know. <laughs> I'd rather live this short life filled with fun than live this life filled with dread and fear and i was like okay cool <laughs> here's a gecko <laughs> like you want it <laughs> and um and i mean it was wasn't too long after that austin had won like i don't know what it was like a hundred thousand dollars on a singing competition at seven years old which i thought was pretty cool um, anyways austin really inspired me and he inspired me to kind of live a lot more fearlessly which in skiing and everything that i've done in my life ever since that moment is kind of attributed to a huge portion of who i am you know beautiful man i love that i love that listen guys andrew kirk is on the show we'll be right back after this message from our sponsor Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Andrew Kirk's on the show. That was Life Over Addiction. Lance Wright is a personal, is a transformational uh, life coach. Let me help you navigate your life's path back to the one of purpose and meaning. He says the chains of shame and guilt no longer have to hold you back. Let's start a brand new conversation. I'm going to call him. It's 310-890-2337. Visit the website, lifeoveraddiction.com, or you can email info at loveoveraddiction.com. Once again, 310 
890-230-237. Want to go back to the uh, wheelchair bodybuilding, bang, <laughs> and your music career, because I know he was a DJ back in the day, country music. Hey, I've delved into you lots of, I've, I've been all over the place. I know everything about you. I know about your birthmark on your back. So tell me about the uh, country music DJ. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> being a country music DJ was, um, it was something, you know, I just, I had just talked about how I met Austin and, you know, how my coach had, um, you know, told me these, and these were two pivotal moments in my life that had helped me to grow. And um, it was just as I had come back from um, this event where I had met Austin, where I started living life fearlessly and I started, you know, really getting after it and doing everything. And I was 15 years old. It was two years after I broke my back and I got back and I said, you know, I need a job. I need to do things just like everyone else is doing. Like, there's no reason for me to be held back. I want to do things the way anybody else does. I just want, I just need to do them differently. You know, I need to do things a little bit differently. And that was when I realized, uh, when I came back, you know, um, I had a good voice. I might as well use it. And I just started applying to all the radio stations in my hometown and around. I was like, you know, uh, I've, had a chance to be on the radio a few times, um, you know, traveling with the Children's Miracle Network. I was like, dude, this is fun. Like, this is a this is a fun job. It really is. Um, especially like commercials, voiceover, acting, like that. It's it's a lot of fun. And um, so I just started applying, and I got a front and desk job um, at working at a radio station. And then um, they called me, and they were like, hey you need to go on live right now. I accidentally left a, a music bed in there. And so you're going to have to talk for two minutes. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> yeah. And I did a good enough job to where they gave me my own show. In the and um, that was, that was where I started when I was young. Yeah. I worked that job for a while. Um, not as much anymore. Now I do more voiceover acting you know, for uh, like animation, which is pretty cool. So, that is really cool. Yeah. So there's this thing that happens, you know, things happen in our lives, random things happen. Some of it we're responsible for, some of it we're not responsible for, but ultimately we're responsible. But I have this theory that like things are happening for us, not against us. Oh. So, right. Yeah. And so, and then you look at Andrew Kirka and, you know, he's broken his back and he can't walk. I mean, he can walk, but he lost his legs. Right. And so how do you describe, how do you share with people that that type of tragedy is happening for Andrew? How do, oh, how do I share that it's happening for yeah, him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, so the very simple thing is it's not just happening for me. It's also happening for those around me so that I can take my story. I can tell it to people <clears throat> and I can take this opportunity to change other lives. Mm -hmm. And in the process of changing other lives and helping other people, people want to help you. And so throughout a lot of my career, a huge focus has been not about helping myself, not really about, you know, how can, how can I help Andrew Kirka? It's more about, how can I help the world mm. and in return? The world wants to help me. And, um, I think probably, um, the biggest, the biggest thing is, um, for, for me, especially, uh, with the personal growth is looking inside and not looking outside to the rest of the world. Mm. You know, um, I cannot blame things on the world. You know, so after I had met um, Austin and I had come back to Alaska and that was the same time where I started bodybuilding because pff, why not? Um, I was working out a lot still <laughs> and um, a guy at the gym, a buddy of mine at the gym was like, hey, you should try it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I tried bodybuilding and it was, it was one of those things where I came back and I very much so had that fearless attitude. Like, you know what, why don't I try it? Why don't I just give it a try? You know, 
I, I have opportunities in my life and um, who's to say I won't grow from these opportunities that are presented to me. And after being presented these opportunities, I had gotten back and I, it was right after I had done my bodybuilding competition. It was in the summertime and my physical therapist took me to go skiing. And that was the moment where I kind of re-realized my dream. I re-realized re the purpose of me, <clears throat> what I wanted to do, what I enjoyed doing. And it was when I had this opportunity to ski and I skied differently. I didn't ski like anybody else. You know, I ski in a sit ski, in a mono ski. I'm sitting down and a lot of people are like, whoa, you know, that's so inspirational. It's so neat. So this, that's so that. I'm like, yeah, that's not me. That I'm just Andrew Kirk, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I started pursuing my dream from there. And it wasn't just pursuing my dream, but it was pursuing the person who I truly wanted to be in life, you know, because I had let my disability kind of hold me back. I'd let it hold me down. Um, but I realized that, you know, I could do anything. I could go kayaking. I can go fishing, I can go hunting, I can go hiking, I can go do things that I used to do, that these things that I love to do, these things that I wanted to do. I can go do these things. I just had to do them a little bit differently. You know? That's, that's amazing. So I have a question for you. Six times uh, an Alaskan state champion and 13 medals on, are we done? No. No. Ah, that's the answer I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm still, I'm still going. Um, that was, that was wrestling, and you know, after I broke my back, I actually started wrestling again. Mm. I had won a state championship after I broke my back. Um, wow. Yeah, it was tough. It was a lot. It was harder than any state championship I'd ever won before, and I can tell you, it was rough on my body. Um, <clears throat> I needed, it messed up, it messed up my knee really bad. I had to get shoulder surgery. Like it, it messed me up, but I won. And the important thing was that I did it, you know? And uh, that's one of those things, you know, that I was talking about, like, it's the perspective and how you look at something to be able to overcome it, you know? I, I mean, I hear that and, you know, I'm in the business of that's what I do for a living is to support people to change their perspective. Because when you change your perspective, you change your life. Oh, yeah. And what I also hear is that, you know, in my world, we must give people the dignity to fail because it's in the failure that we learn more about ourselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's when growth happens. Right. And, and Andrew, how do you allow people to fail? Like, what is your, you know, how do you, because they look at you and they're like, you've overcome everything. There's no way I can do this. You know, there's that, there's that mindset, the humanness of, of people, right? That we get stuck in our shit. So how do you support people or what do you tell them to come out of that? Well, um, I can tell you another story about myself right now. Yeah. So um, throughout my career, um, until recently, I had failed more than I had ever succeeded. Mm -hmm. And not just in normal, easy ways. Um, and, you know, failure never seems easy and it never seems normal. <laughs> you know, failure is unique. And that's the funny thing about failure is it could be something little to someone else, but it could be the biggest thing in the world to you. Mm -hmm. And throughout my career, um, well before I ever achieved a gold medal at, you know, the Olympics or well before I had podiumed in the Paralympics or well before I had done anything in in this career, uh, I had failed and I had broken over 22 bones. Um, two of them were back to back. These are two broken my back three times. Um, and I've broken my right femur, had shoulder surgery and countless concussions. Um, and there's one moment where I felt like everything was going to be taken away from me, that this entire career, everything that I had worked for, you know, this entire dream I had since 
my coach had held my shoulders as a young man and told me, you know, remember that there's always going to be someone better from the moment that I had met Austin to the moment I first started skiing. It was all about to be stripped away from me. Um, this one moment, and it was my very first uh, Paralympic Games in Sochi, Russia. I had gone off the jump too fast and too big, and I had landed improperly, and I had broken my back again. Mm -hmm. And um, I had gone to the hospital. I didn't even get to walk in opening ceremonies. I was sent straight home, and um, it was a whole debacle. And then I had just started skiing. I had just gotten back on snow after this had happened. And a young man had run into me and broken my right femur on the hill, on the ski hill. And so this was a moment. Like, there's criteria to being on the U.S. team. Like, you have to be one of the top in the world. You have to prove your place or else you're <coughs> off the team and you're no longer there. And... I hadn't skied for over nine months and I'm supposed to be competing with the best in the world. And this was a really hard moment for me. So my legs are paralyzed, but I can still feel them. Mm -hmm. So the pain of my right femur was so excruciating that I was having, um, you know, convulsions. Like I was passing out literally every five seconds. I, 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 I couldn't, couldn't do anything, you know, um, until they, they gave me drugs to help with it. Um, I had had surgery and I was at home and not only had, I felt like everything had been taken away from me. Not only had I felt like, you know, I might not be able to keep going in this career. Like I had dedicated everything to it. I didn't know what the next step in my life was. And it was this moment where I didn't know what the next step in my life was that I started building baby goals. And I started realizing that, you know, I didn't have to be perfect every single day. I didn't have to be a hundred percent. I just had to be better. I had to learn from my mistakes, not do it again and grow. Mm -hmm. and I, love that. I, I love the attitude. I just, he was always meant to be a winner. Guys, we've got lots more questions coming up for Andrew Kirkus. Stick around. Quick commercial break. Hey, welcome back to the show, guys. And for those on podcast, that was Recovery, Living Recovery Interventions. Recovery begins today. Recovery begins together. Get the gift of recovery. Travis, good friend of ours, is only the best in the world. If a loved one is troubled or troubling, call Travis on 801-573-4188. Visit the website, livingrecoveryinterventions.com. 801-573-4188. And remember, guys, recovery begins today. Recovery begins together. So I'll take you back to 2014. What was it like when you got that conversation, that letter, that phone call to tell you, Andrew Kirker, that you have made the US team? That was um, that was probably the number one most exciting moment. Um, that was it a phone call or was it a letter or? Um, Actually, it was my coach shaking my hand and telling me wow. that's really what it was. Um, <laughs> and um, it was, I remember, because um, after I had broken my femur and everything, um, my very first World Cup podium was at the very same hill where I became qualified for the games. It was the very first downhill that I won. And it was a World Cup downhill. And so it was a pretty big deal for me. Um, and, you know, speaking back on failures, um, I had failed. So you get multiple chances to run the court and then the fastest, because it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so the fastest, the fastest run wins. I had failed every single run up until that one run where I won the gold. Wow. And 
yeah, that was the that was that one moment that like really um, it was it was awesome. It was like it gave me an opportunity to make the life that I always wanted, doing the thing that I had loved to do. And um, you know, like I had talked about before, that was taken away from me when I had crashed, <laughs> and then I had broken my femur, and um, that was probably that that fourth really big moment in my life. Um, where I realized that, you know, it wasn't about gold medals. <clears throat> it wasn't about being the best in the world anymore. It wasn't about my competition. It wasn't about anybody else. It wasn't about what people think of me. It wasn't about anything like that. It was about who I wanted to be, mm -hmm. who I wanted to be. And um, I started setting baby goals for myself. You know, and I started, I realized that I needed to set small goals and I needed to learn from my mistakes because I was laying in bed with a broken femur and I had to pee so bad, but I didn't want to crawl to the bathroom, but I had to crawl to the bathroom and with a broken femur, it's extremely painful. <laughs> and so I would crawl to the door. And I would open the door and then I would sit there and I would huff and I would puff and I'd be like, I made it, that hurt. And then I would crawl to the next door, the bathroom door, I would open it, I would sit there and I would huff and I would puff. And then I would crawl to the toilet and I would pee. And I'd be like, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing ever. And then I'd sit there and I would dread having to crawl back. And, um, you know, you can take this and you can relate it to your own life in so many ways but i would have never accomplished those small things and i would have never accomplished getting back on the snow and becoming a world cup medalist as quickly as i did if i did not set those baby goals and all they were were goals of growth you know mm -hmm. it was nothing more than wanting to be a better version of myself mm. wow yeah, that's, that was that was it. And ever since then, my career has been pretty easy sailing. <laughs> <laughs> ever since then, just had to go through just a tiny, tiny bit of stuff yeah. to and get there, not, right? <laughs> not like the, not like the easiest of sailings. I've still broken a lot of bones since then. Um, like um, world championships, which was the first time I really had my big come out story, and. Um, I had won world championships with broken ribs, you know, very painful. Mm -hmm. And then it was right after that, that I had won the gold and silver medal in Pyeongchang. Mm -hmm. And then since then, um, things have been a lot easier for me and not like easy, like things are coming to me. Like I'm still working for everything that I have, but things have been a lot easier because of the way I choose to live my life now. And that's, yeah. That's really all it is. You know, I focus on a lot more of kind of the, 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 the positive. <clears throat> and, you know, there's, it's become the way that I live my life. And it's been a very successful way to live my life. And it's been, you know, I, I learned from the things that I failed at. And I grow in the ways that I want to be better. And I focus on those things, you know, I fail a lot still, <clears throat> but it, it, it's not what it used to be. So I love how you speak about that. I love how you speak about, I fail a lot and like, it's okay. You know, it's all, you, you make, you do not make it mean anything about you personally, which I love. And I must ask this question just because I'm such a curious person, but you said that you lied in bed when you were 13 and you were like, will I ever have a girlfriend? Will I ever? Did oh, you yeah. get a girlfriend? Oh, yeah, totally. I have a great girlfriend. <laughs> oh, yeah. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> <We're like five. laughs> I love that. I, I I way, everything's just a breeze. You can tell it's hard work behind there. but the Yeah. I've just got a quick message out, which I think is really cool, on my Facebook, Bill Davidson. I don't know whether you know him. Andrew, he lives in Las Vegas. He says he saw you in the 2018 the Downhill Winter Olympics. And he says, if there's not really a question, he just said, thank you for being a, uh, thank you for your leadership. 
is what he said. I thought that was really cool. That's uh, Bill Davidson from Las Vegas. So I'm going to touch on that a little bit and, and see if it if it affected you. But obviously, you've been through a lot of trauma in your life, time after time after time. And uh, what sort of effect, first of all, do you have trauma from the past? And secondly, what are you doing about it, if so? Or don't so, you? Um, yes. <laughs> My entire story is based around trauma <laughs> and the ways that I, I overcame that trauma, you know, um, from the moment my wrestling coach held my shoulders and said, remember, there's always going to be someone better. Um, you know, that moment that I went from the high pedestal straight to the ground and, and then, um, you know, the moment I met Austin DeGroote. The moment I met that young man with an uncertain future who knew how he wanted to live and nothing was going to change that, um, that helped me to, to live fearlessly. And then the moment where my physical therapist had taken me to the ski hill and had shown me the opportunity for growth, you know, the opportunity was there. I just had to choose to take it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then... And then it goes to the the other trauma, the real trauma, the stuff that uh, <laughs> made me feel like all of that work and all of those things that I had learned in my younger years was going to be taken away. Mm -hmm. And when you when you sit there and you have to face these things, when you when you sit down and you take that moment to face yourself mm -hmm. and decide how you want to be better, you know just like I did when I was young. And then you take that moment where you decide that you're going to do something about it and you pursue it fearlessly, you know, just like Austin did. And then you take that moment and you change your perspective and you decide that you want to do things no matter what the obstacle, you just have to do them in your own way. And it doesn't matter what anybody thinks, you know, just like when I started skiing. And then you, you, you take those moments where you think you're at the top of the world and you're finally getting there and then you fail and you fail and you fail over again. You take that just like I did, you know, just like when I crashed at the game, just like when I broke my femur, just like when I broke my back, just like when I had the number one opportunity to accomplish my dream, to be the best in the world and to achieve everything. And I failed, you know, you take those moments and you grow from them. You learn from them and you become a better person because of it. We yeah. all fail, we all face challenges, and we all face obstacles. But what's important is that you don't let the failures define you. You know, you let the person who you want to be and you let the growth define you. And that's what my story is all about. It's about learning who I really wanted to be, who I really wanted to become. And, you know, in life, you can't take anything personal. I've learned that you can't take any, you can't even take yourself personal, you know, you fail a lot. <laughs> and if you take it personal, then you're just going to be miserable because guess what? You're going to suck a lot. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's life. Isn't about not sucking. It's about sucking less. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, and you know, I didn't come up with that. That's a philosophy in ski racing because mm. you can never have the perfect run, no. mm. you know? And that's, I think that's a good metaphor for life, you know? Just, for sure. Yeah. You know, you can never have the perfect run. There's always conditions. There's always your skis. There's always equipment. There's always you. And there's always weather that can mess things up. You know, I was in team France racing in a world cup one time. And um, there was a really heavy updraft wind, um, probably about 40, 50 miles an hour. It was right on the verge of them canceling the race. And I had raced and I had gone down to the bottom of the mountain and I had crossed the finish line and I was in the lead by about four hundredths of a second. It was a really close race and um, I was winning in this World Cup. And then, you know, everyone else had come down and you know, everyone was congratulating me. They were giving me the kudos and saying, good job. And then the wind stopped. And the last four people that had never even got like top tens in the World Cup before <clears throat> all came down and beat me. You know? That was the wind. 
Yeah, damn the wind. Oh. But you know, sometimes the world works against you. Yeah. And if you take it personal, you're never going to grow from it and you're never going to learn from it. Mm. Fantastic story. Fantastic. Just unbelievable. We've come to the end of the show, Andrew. But, okay. uh, Wow. I want to say a couple of things because we always do at the end and it's just off the heart. We never have it, have it uh, written down and, and we, we never plan this. But first of all, I want to commend you and recognize you for a few things. First of all, you're an amazing influencer. <clears throat> There's no doubt about that. You're a fantastic role model. It's the first time anybody's texted in or messaged me in and said they've seen you in action. It's phenomenal. And the millions of people that you've touched is just phenomenal. And I want to add one more to the millions of people that you have touched. And that one more would be me. It's <laughs> just amazing to listen to you. You know, I remember as a young lad, I had the same tenacity, especially when I was bodybuilding. My biggest goal was to win the Olympic and then die. That was it. I didn't want anything else. You know, and over the years, you kind of get set in your big house with your big bank account and all that stuff. And you, you try and help people and you think you do. And then somebody like you comes on. And you go, <laughs> shit, there's a lot more for me to do. You know, because this guy's doing it and he's doing it with a smile on his face and he's doing it like, I remember sat in Abbey Road, I used to be a, a musician at Abbey Road and there was a story going around by the Beatles and because the Beatles got down, got turned down by about seven record companies and someone was talking to Paul McCartney in a studio somewhere and he said, you've been turned down so many times, you, you know, you're thinking of packing this in? I mean, no one thinks you're any good. And he leant over and said, yeah, but we know we're good. And they carried on and they had that mindset of, I, mean, I always say, I mean, me, Jen will tell you, you know, I'm the best in the world of what I do. How do I know? Because I fucking am. It's <laughs> like, oh, well, I, well, prove me wrong. You know, I, I'm, I'm, if, if there's something to learn, I'm on it. If, if there's something to do, I've got to get on it. So thank you so much, Andrew, for spending your time with us. Such an amazing guy. And like I say, you've changed my life today. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you, Dr. Rob. Yeah. And Andrew, I just really, I'm, I'm humbled by your humbleness. <coughs> um, you, you walk through this world with your heart blazing out and that's what leads you. And that's what I see in you. And that's your strength. And it's beautiful. And it was so amazing to meet you. And thank you for sharing your story. And, um, and I just wish you nothing but the best. And, um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much indeed. If you've got any messages for Andrew or you want to visit his website, andrewkirker.com, at the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> guys, we're about to finish the show off after this. Now then, now then, now then, he used to be a famous wow. I know, right? That guy is, oh my God. We're such a lazy pair of people, me and you. We need to get our finger out of our ass and do something. This is incredible. Very oh my God. I mean, and like, we got to get on it, Dr. Rob. Are you serious? Oh, God. <laughs> Ooh, man. Don't be going and sitting on your couch and your lazy boy, buddy. <laughs> my, my, new, my new Chesterfield. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, awesome! Absolutely changed yeah. my mood. There was there was uh, shivers going across the back. I of know. Yeah, I know. I Absolutely mean, yeah, amazing. Yeah, phenomenal yeah. man, phenomenal. Yeah, and in no doubt he's going to go on to do some more amazing things. And yes. his presence alone, uh, just I mean, how can you not be inspired by that? You just you just have to be inspired by that. Unbelievable, Absolutely. guys! I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, we'll be back on Friday with oh, a. We won't. New it's New Year's Day. We will not be back on Friday. We will not be here Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. It's like, Jay, what day is it? It's Wednesday. Wednesday already? <laughs> oh, it's Tuesday. It's like, I, know. I know. It's crazy. Let's just get back to normal, right? Definitely. I can't wait for this to be over. <laughs> okay, guys. We'll see you next Monday. Yes. See you next, next Monday. Monday. Happy Stay New Year. Yeah, happy new year, guys, and stay well. Speak to you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs>